Hey guys, I'm CJ Wellerman. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our show. Now let's get into it. The September 11 attacks not only unleashed the global war on terror, but also a global war against Muslims. This war has been fought on foreign lands, in our courts, and in the mainstream media, where we are constantly fed a diet of lies about Islam. We are told Islam hates us by every Don, Dick and Murray. We are also told Muslims hold a particular hatred for the Jewish people and are predisposed towards violence and misogyny, which proves exactly what? It proves Islam continues to be the most misunderstood religion in the world today and throughout human history. I mean, come on, 9-11 was 20 years ago, but still, today, really stupid stuff is said about the religious belief of 1.6 billion people. And I'm not just talking about your typical knuckle-dragging, mouth-breathing Trump supporter, but also highly educated people like, you know, Jordan Peterson, who wants the world to believe Muslims are guided by their faith to bully Christians and Jews. It is time for those of you in the Muslim world to stop fighting among yourselves, you Shiites and Sunnis, and also time to stop regarding the Christians and even more specifically, the Jews as your enemies. Honestly, I'm surprised he didn't compare Muslims to Nazis, given he's now employed by the white nationalist rag, the Daily Wire. But here's what people like Peterson either don't want you to know or just don't know that Muslims peacefully coexisted with Jews in the Middle East for centuries. Problems only started when powerful European states decided to steal Palestinian land and then hand it over to Jewish migrants in the 20th century, who have busied themselves ethnically cleansing the Palestinian territories for the past 75 years. If Palestinians were being dispossessed and displaced by Chinese migrants, then they would hate the Chinese occupation as much and no less than they hate their Zionist colonial overlords. So sorry to disappoint you, but Muslims are not inherently anti-Semitic. That's just something Israel wants you to believe because it gives it diplomatic cover. In fact, anti-Semitism emerged not from the Muslim Middle East, but from Christian Europe. In fact, uh, modern anti-Semitism in the Middle East was imported from, finish the sentence, Christian, Judeo-Christian Europe, where I believe some certainly bad things happened to the Jewish people. In fact, Tom Friedman, Jewish American columnist in the New York Times, told me in this very chamber last week that he believed, had Muslims been running Europe in the 1940s, six million extra Jews would still be alive today. So I'm not going to take lessons in anti-Semitism from someone who's here to defend the Judeo-Christian values of a continent that murdered six million Jews. You see, one of the missions of the Prophet Muhammad was to bring peace and unity to warring tribes on the Arabian Peninsula. The Quran repeatedly declares that the Jewish people shall attain eternal paradise and it recognizes the Jewish prophets, the divine origin of the Torah and the Psalms of David. The Prophet treated the Jewish people well and Jews treated him well in return, excluding a single Jewish tribe that betrayed him by reneging on a peace treaty. So where the Quran singles out Jews in a small handful of verses, the prophet is referring only to a single backstabbing tribe. I mean, this shouldn't be controversial. Modern nation states go to war over broken treaties all the time. Heck, we invaded Iraq because we believe Saddam Hussein had violated his peace treaty with the United States by not getting rid of his WMDs. But more to the point, if you're going to accuse Islam of anti-Semitism, then it's only because you've never read the New Testament of the Bible, where Jews are referred to as dogs, pigs, and snakes. And the New Testament was written hundreds of years before Islam was even born. But somehow Christians are not widely accused of being bloodthirsty Jew haters. That title is reserved only for Muslims. Why? Well, because anti-Semitism no longer works as a political tool in Western countries given people understand that anti-Jewish bigotry invariably leads to another Holocaust. Why then has it not dawned on these same countries that Islamophobia also leads to really dark places, when they can see in real time how anti-Muslim bigotry is producing an ongoing genocide in Myanmar and China, and possibly another one in India? This blatant cognitive dissonance is everywhere. Look at Europe, where anti-Semitism is considered a crime, but insulting Islam and Muslims is protected by freedom of speech. This double standard has not only directly contributed to the rise of Islamophobia, but also an upward surge in anti-Muslim hate crimes. It's just an undeniable fact that in Western countries, anti-Semitism gets you cancelled, but Islamophobia gets you rich and famous, or puts you in the White House or number 10 Downing Street for the simple reason Islamophobia remains a seductive political weapon. 
Islamophobia allows politicians to pretend the problems that exist within our countries are not the products of our bad choices, but the import of a foreign other. Islamophobia says, hey, the problem is not with us, it's with them, the Muslims. So if we can just rid ourselves of them, then all will be good. Our country will be made great again. It's the great lie told by Hindu nationalists in India, Han nationalists in China, Buddhist supremacists in Myanmar, and white nationalists in America, including Donald Trump. You told CNN, quote, Islam hates us. Did you mean all 1.6 billion Muslims? I mean a lot of them. I mean a lot of them. I will tell you, there's something going on that maybe you don't know about, and maybe a lot of other people don't know about, but there's tremendous hatred, and I will stick with exactly what I said. Central to Trump's big lie about Muslims is the notion Islam encourages terrorism. Despite the Quran and the Islamic hadiths explicitly condemning the killing of innocent people, including non-Muslims. And while I don't consider myself an expert on much, I do consider myself somewhat of an expert on violent extremism, having attained a university degree in counterterrorism and having interviewed more jihadists than just about anyone on the planet. But here's my friend Mehdi Hassan. Listen to Professor Robert Pape of the University of Chicago, one of America's leading terrorism experts, who, unlike our esteemed opposition tonight, studied every single case of suicide terrorism between 1980 and 2005, 315 cases in total. And he concluded, and I quote, there is little connection between suicide terrorism and Islamic fundamentalism or any of the world's religions. Rather, what nearly all suicide terrorist attacks have in common is a specific secular and strategic goal to compel modern democracies to withdraw military forces from territory that the terrorists consider to be their homeland. Blaming Islam for terrorism has become the ultimate weapon for every wannabe dictator and despot. It's the gift that keeps on giving every far-right, ultra-nationalist movement around the world. And to be brutally blunt, Muslims are the new Jews, who like Muslims today, were blamed for spreading violence and disease throughout the Christian world. In India, Muslims were even blamed for spreading the coronavirus. Mohammed Naim's mother rubs ointment on his bruises. The 35-year-old says he was attacked by a group of men when he was out selling vegetables on his cart. After asking my name, they said, you're a Muslim, you've destroyed the country, you've spread coronavirus and then started beating me with sticks. There were five or six of them. Wow, Modi's India, what more is there left to say? But let me finish with this. Please don't misconstrue me to be some kind of Islamic scholar or expert on Islam. I'm not. What I am is a recovering Islamophobe. I was seduced by Islamophobia after witnessing an Al-Qaeda terrorist attack in Indonesia 17 years ago. I blamed Islam for the violence and then wrote a book about it. For a period of four years until 2009, I hated Islam and feared Muslims, like so many in Western countries do and have since 9-11. But what cured me of my Islamophobia was to gain a deep understanding of the Quran and the life in historical times of the Prophet Muhammad. I spent the past 13 years countering Islamophobia by exposing its seductive tropes and hypnotic lies. But clearly we have much more work to do. I hope you will join me in this fight. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash cjwellerman. We can't produce, sustain, and grow this show without your help. We offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, or good day, wherever you are, and stay blessed.